Are you thinking about undertaking a townhouse development but lack confidence in your numbers? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm going to share how we here at Little Fish run our preliminary feasibilities. By the end, you'll hopefully have the confidence you need to make a decision on that site you're looking at. Let's get into it. Hi guys, Peter Kelly here from Little Fish Property Developments. We help everyday landowners just like you maximize the value of your land through low risk development projects. On this channel, we share everything you need to know to deliver successful projects time and time again. So if you aren't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing. When it comes to undertaking a townhouse feasibility study on a potential development site, it's important to note that it doesn't matter what spreadsheet or software that you may be using, the results are only going to be as good as the informational numbers that you input. If the numbers that you input are rubbery, by default, the result will also be rubbery. So it's critical there is genuine thought and science behind your numbers. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to use our own internal application called the Cruncher, which breaks the project's numbers into five main categories. The purchase, planning, build, holding, and of course, the sale figures. As I mentioned, it's less about the software and more about the numbers that you need to consider and what you input. The Cruncher is is what we use internally to run our preliminary feasibilities. This is how we determine if a site is worth investigating further. It is important to note that if a site stacks up in the cruncher, then we'll undertake another level of due diligence before making a final decision. The Cruncher's algorithm is no different to other feasibility software available out on the open market. It has preset formulas and calculations behind the numbers which I'll also detail along the way through. Let's start plugging some numbers in and I'll explain them as we go. First up is the purchase. Here we input the proposed purchase amount. The Cruncher then automatically calculates the stamp duty and imports a default amount for the adjustments which can be changed if needed. It then gives us the estimated total purchase price. Next Next, we look at the planning cost. This is where we add an estimate of the total planning costs. Planning costs that you need to consider include all the early and middle development costs. Obviously, all the projects are going to be different, but to get you heading in the right direction, some costs you'll need to consider include the surveying, town planning drawings, working drawings, interior design, demolition, plan of subdivision, telecommunications, and additional crossover if required, power, water, and marketing assets. And it's always good practice to add contingency and a miscellaneous amount. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to input $90,000 for planning. I'm also going to assume it's a dual occupancy site, so there's no open space contribution required. Also assume there's $71,500 in project management fees. Next up, we need to look at the build cost. In the cruncher, we plug in the estimated dwelling sizes and the budget per square meter. For accuracy, we leverage our own internal IP and history. Next up, we need to consider the bank interest holding costs. We input the interest rate we believe the funds are going to cost us, and we estimate the term the funds will be drawn down. Finally, we need to input the estimated sales revenue. For this, we leverage local comparable sales history data with the cruncher automatically considering the agent's fees. I should also point out that the cruncher also uses the margin scheme when considering the GST as part of the final calculations. Using a software like the cruncher allows us to identify the maximum price we should pay for a site to achieve our target. All done without emotion and avoiding rubbery and inconsistent feasibilities. After completing a feasibility, it can be saved easily and sent to all relevant parties instantly. This is how the feasibilities present. All the data is taken straight from the cruncher. We find comparable sales data to come up with pessimistic, realistic and optimistic sales prices. With our efficiencies and know-how, we are confident we can achieve optimistic outcomes, but ultimately if a potential site stacks up at a pessimistic level, then this is where we'll complete further detailed due diligence and look to put our best foot forward to acquire the site. When it comes to feasibilities, if you are working with numbers you trust, the numbers don't lie. A site either stacks up or it doesn't. There are many townhouse feasibility software options out there on the open market, most of which offer free trial periods. So when you are just starting out, it's a good idea to play around with as many as you can. When you find the one, you'll know. From there, it's going to be about the numbers you input. This is going to change and evolve all the time. So it's about keeping your finger on the pulse and ensure you have some science and ultimately confidence behind your numbers. The key to feasibilities is to ensure you undertake them 
without emotion. The numbers will either stack up or they won't. That's a wrap, guys. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments box below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Peter Kelly. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy developing.